Joe, baby, listen, give me a break. What do you expect me to dig up 1,500 clams between now and midnight? You had time. Why didn't you get it? Well, I tried. I, I, I tried every place. So you didn't try hard enough. Look, Joe, give me a week. I'll make it good in a week. You've had a week. I know I've had a week already, but Joe, look. Okay, get it. By tomorrow night. Sure. Sure, Joe. Tomorrow night. My place. Your place. 9.30. 9.30. Have it, understand? Yeah, yeah. I'll have it. Where do you think you're going? I'm sorry. killer of women stalks a town. This man has seen the killer. He doesn't know it yet, but as sure as my name is Boris Karloff, he will meet the killer again and will recognize him. You or I will turn him in, but this man uses the murderer for a most bizarre purpose. Knock 312. That's the name of our story. And our principal players are Mr. Joe Maross, Miss Beverly Garland, Mr. Charles Aidman, and Mr. Warren Oates. Knock 312. That friendly knock will cause a lovely woman to open a door with terrifying consequences. Let me warn you, lady. If you hear that knock at the next hour, do not open your door. Just sit there and enjoy the tingling suspense of this thriller. Have you been all last night, all today? Uh, I've got to talk to you, Ruthie. Well, then talk. Look, can you call the restaurant and tell them you're not coming in tonight? What for? Are you going to take me out in the town? Ruthie, all last night and all today, I've been trying to get that money. You've got to help me out, Ruthie. I told you, Ray, over and over, I can't. You mean you won't? You've got that savings account of yours, 4,000 bucks. Yes, that's right. I've got it right here. That's my money, Ray. I worked hard for it for years. Now, you're not going to get any of it, not anymore. Well, am I your husband or what? I don't know. You tell me. Night after night, one bar to another, you're never home. I'm a liquor salesman. How do you expect me to sell liquor if I don't go into bars? Is that why you owe those men $1,500 because you sell? Oh, no. But you're gambling. In the back room of those bars. The poker, the horse races, the dice, night after night after night.
Honey. I'm scared, Ruthie. You don't know these guys, Joey Bedell and the others. If I don't pay up by tonight, 9.30, well, it, it might be kind of rough. Oh, hey. You've lied to me so often. Ruthie, if you've ever believed me in my life, believe me now. You've got to. These guys are going to kill me. For fifteen hundred dollars. Gamblers like these. They're not kidding this time. Honey, believe me. I believed you before what happened and went right down the drain. I'm sorry. I just can't believe you anymore. Lucy. I'm not going to give you the money, Ray. I never thought I had the courage to say that. But I don't believe you anymore. Not now. Not for months. There was over $6,000 in that banking account, and I've dipped into it for you over and over again. And it's always been the same. You've just been using it for your gambling. Well, there's just got to be an end to it. Somewhere there's just got to be a stopping point. Ruth. Ruthie, listen. Long time no see. Who is this? It's Ray. Ray who? Uh, Ray Kitten, buddy boy. <laughs> I had to wait for you, Mrs. Kenton, but I didn't want anybody to see me. You had to wait for me? What for, Benny? The police. You got to take me to them. Oh, Benny, Benny. You got to take me to them, Mrs. Kenton. Is it because of the newspapers today? You got to turn me in. You got to tell them who I really am. If you tell them, they'll believe you. <sighs> Come on, Benny, let's go over here and sit down. Oh, business is great, but, but, but they're a couple of days late and... Uh... I, I was wondering if you could see your way clear to, uh... How much do you need? Fifteen hundred. Oh, I can't make it to the bank by three. Yeah, but this is Friday. The, the banks are open till six. Look, Ray, I, I can't. You understand. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I hope you don't mind. Well, no, no, of course not. No problem. I, I just thought I'd take a little pressure off the old valve, you know? You understand, of course. I, I hope you don't mind. No, 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 no problem. Uh, give my uh, love to Julie. And the lousy, rotten kids. Benny, listen, every time this has happened, you try to turn yourself in, and it's never you. It's like somebody trying to punish themselves for something they didn't do. But I did. Four women. The newspapers said the woman had dark hair under her fingernails. There's been four women, and each one of them has been attacked at night, right? Now, what time do you get to your newsstand at night? Six. And what time do you leave? Two. Well, you see, I know that. The police know it. Mr. Kenton knows it. And a hundred other men who buy their newspapers from you. Every time one of these killings have happened, Benny, you've been at your newsstand. Have you talked to Dr. Masterson lately? Why not? You won't believe that I'm the one that did it. I don't think he likes me. You like me, Benny? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't let nothing happen to you, Mrs. Kenton. Well, then believe me. You couldn't hurt anybody. You just don't have it in you. Benny, I've got to go. I'm going to be late for work. Goodbye, Ben. 
by you, Ruthie, a little early. Come in. Oh, Ruth. How come you're so early? It's nowhere near six o'clock. I want to talk to you for a minute. Sure, sure. Come on, sit down. It's Ray. Same trouble? Money? I turned him down again, but this time I'm not so sure I should have. Why not? Well, there was something about him, something genuinely scared. He said the men he owes this to will, will hurt him in some way if he doesn't pay the money. This, this Joe Bedell. Do you want to give him the money? I don't know. I just don't want him hurt. You're a very loyal person, Ruth. Maybe it's just that I don't like to admit that I'm licked, George. After all, I've been married to Ray for eight years, and I... Eight years. And I've just seen him go down and down and down. Somehow I just can't help blaming myself. It's like somewhere I've done something wrong. I failed him somehow. It's like a man who's drowning and keeps calling for help and you just don't hear him. Well, all I want is a little help in advance on your orders. 1500 bucks worth? Well, I'll make it good. I don't like it, Ray. You're in some kind of a jam. Whatever it is, I don't want any part of it. I'm sorry. Okay. Sure, Charlie. Thanks, anyway. Come in the house, Ray. They don't have to buy me any drinks. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, would you mind telling Ruth... Uh, Ruth Kenton to... Step outside a minute, please. I'm, I'm her husband. Oh, oh, sure. Thank you. this money thing. That's the only thing between us. If I didn't have that on my mind. Oh, Ruthie. Remember how it used to be. If it weren't for this one thing. It could be like that again. I promise. Right. Tell me one thing, just one thing. Do you love me? Oh, oh, wait a minute, I want you to think first. Think of this year and the last two years. Think of all the mean things I've said and done and then tell me. Do you, Ray? I worship you.
Ruthie, about the money, I I've been thinking. Yes, Frank. Well, well, I know how you feel about that savings account of yours. I mean, having a guy like me for a husband, it, it gives you a feeling of security. Ray. No, no, don't apologize. I agree. You're entitled to a feeling of security. And, and that bank account gives it to you. Well, I, I've gotten into this trouble and... I've figured a way you can help me. And at the same time, not touch a penny of your savings account. How is that right? You can borrow the 1500 Borrow it and pay it back a little at a time. <laughs> Who am I going to borrow it from? George. I can't do a thing like that, Ray. Well, why not? He's stuck on you. We both know that. You ask him and he'll give it. He'd give you anything you'd ask for. No. Now, I need it, Ruth. Those men will kill me. Look, I'm not going to give it to you now or, or ever from him. You've got to help me, Ruth. Look, you didn't come here to tell me you were sorry. You were just pretending, using me the way you always do. Now, you're, let me go. You're going to help me, do you understand? Stop it. You're going to ask George! Everything all right out here? Yes. George Ray just came to say goodbye. For good. I'm sorry, Ray. I know this can't be very easy on either one of you. Good night, Ray. I tried. Look, first thing in the morning. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Ray boy. We're going to give you till tomorrow night, okay? Thank you. Yeah, but we're going to have to have something in return. You owe us 3,000 now, Ray boy. Okay? Just to make sure you have the money tomorrow night. You don't have the money tomorrow night, you're dead.
You were in my place, Mr. Kenton. I found you in an alley. Down there. You sick or something, Mr. Kenton? Yeah, Benny, I... I was sick. I was going to have some soup, Mr. Kenton. Will you want some? No, thanks, Benny. You go ahead. Benny, you should stop collecting these things. What things? These stories about the guy who's been going around harming women, killing them. Uh, I have to, Mr. Kenton. Why? I just have to. I like to read about myself. But, Benny, you are not that man. Oh, sure I am. The only trouble is, I don't remember it when I'm doing it. It's only afterwards when I read enough papers that I know I've done it again. Benny, the times you've gone down to the police station and confessed, they made you talk to a doctor, didn't they? Oh, sure. The, the last time I, I would, I would, oh, I told Mrs. Kenton about that. And you haven't seen him since? No. He won't believe me neither. Oh, oh, look, look, Mr. Kenton. Did you, did you read the newspaper? No. I've been too busy all day, Benny. Well, it happened last night, about 11 o'clock. See, see here, the corner of First and Bower. Boyer and First. Boyer. I was right there about 11. In a phone booth. That guy that bumped into me. Long hair. The woman had long hair under her fingernails. I got long hair, Mr. Kenton. So do a lot of people, Benny. Your soup's hot. Oh. I, I guess I'd better be going, Benny. Thanks for the help. You sure you want to stay for some soup, Mr. Kenton? It's got pieces of chicken in it. No, thanks, Benny. Benny, if I were you... I think I'd go see that police doctor again. <laughs> Good night, Benny. So long. Doctors. What did doctors know? Nothing. Long time no see. Sorry. Frank's not here anymore. Oh. Oh, uh, where is he working now? Frank came into a little dough. His old man passed on. Well, look, he and I used to be real good buddies. Uh, you know where I can reach him tonight? Call information in Honolulu. What? Frank's moved to Honolulu.
What to the piece, friend? Bottle of beer, please. Hello, is Joe Bedell there? Who's this? Ray Kenton. Joe here. Hello, Joey. Listen, this is Ray. Yeah? Look, Joe, about that money. What about it? Joe, you've got to believe me. I'm going to get the money, but it's going to take a few days. How many? Uh, three or four. What's the gimmick? You've got to call off your board. Is this another stall? Joe, believe me, I can guarantee it. It's a sure thing. From where? My wife's savings account. I heard that before. I'm going to get it, I tell you. All of it. Okay, three days. Thanks, Jody. You're a real pal. Uh, let me have a beer. Bartender. Draft. Hi. The name's Ray Kenton. I'm glad to meet you, sir. Uh, I can't stand drinking alone. Can't stand being alone, for that matter. I guess that's why I became a salesman, seeing people all the time. Boy, that sure hits the spot. Uh, you, uh, do much traveling? I do. That's one of the nice things about my kind of work. You, you move around, you, you see the country. Like tonight, for instance, I'm meeting my boss in 45 minutes. Uh, are you married? No, sir. Well, then maybe you wouldn't understand how I feel. I've got the greatest little wife. Sometimes I think I ought to have my head examined, leaving a doll like that alone. See what I mean? She's ten times prettier than that photograph. She's beautiful. Yes, sir. Sweetest little wife in town. And I've got to leave her all alone. <laughs> I wish I could make things a lot easier for you. You do? Just by being yourself? When you're ready, I'll take you home. I'll be right over here at the desk. Okay. Boy, it's things like that make a guy worry. Feel easy leaving her. 
Even though I've got this bolt that thick inside the front door. Oh, thank you. Huh? Pumps. You know, it's uh, kind of clever, this signal we have. You see, when I come home unexpected, there's this signal we have, so Ruthie will know it's me and opens up. Like that. Three, one, two. And she said to me, you can't forget that one. It's our address. Three, one, two, Covington. And you know what happened the first time I tried it? I forgot it. <laughs> Three, one, two. Boy, she razzed me about that one for weeks. She kept saying to me, what's the matter with you? You're away from home so much you can't even remember your own address. Well, I've, I've got to be going. May I, may I buy you a beer in return? Oh, no thanks. I'll finish this one. Uh, uh, my boss will be here in five minutes. He uh, usually tries to get through the city traffic pretty fast. Thanks again, Mr. Kenton. Ray Kenton. Sure, bud. See you around, maybe. <laughs> Anything wrong? Give me a double whiskey. Neat. On top of all that beer? It kind of puts a cap on the evening. Okay, but the evening's almost gone. And we close in a half hour. Oh? Yeah, we always close at midnight. But, but I thought you stayed open till two, like all the other bar. In this neck of the woods? <laughs> Come on, answer it. Hello? Benny, listen, this is Mr. Kenton. Look, I've been thinking it over about you being that guy. What guy? The one who's been doing the killings. Now, I think you better go down to the police station and confess again. Can you get down there in 15 minutes? Yeah, sure, Mr. Kenton. But they don't believe me. Now, look. Copy down this number. G-U-3-1... C-U... No, no, no. G. D-U... No, G! G-U-3-1-1-2-7! G U three one one two seven. Yeah, that's right. Now, when you get down there, tell them to call me here right away, and I'll come down. I'll make them believe you're the one. Now, read that number back to me. Okay. G U three one one two seven. That's right. Now. Are you sure you can make it down there in 15 minutes? Be sure you do. And tell them to call me here right away. Before this place closes up. You understand? Yeah, Mr. Kent. Okay. Look, mister, are you sure you want that drink? Sure, why not? I don't know. Look at you. You're dripping wet.
Ruth. Yes? I'm worried about you. You sure you're going to be all right? Sure. I wish. Why do you wish, George? I wish you were a lot happier. Good night. Good night, George. One more. Besides, I'm waiting for a phone call. We've got ten minutes. Okay, it's your funeral. Hello? Ray Kenton, please. This is Ray Kenton. Uh, this is the police. Benny said to call you. Oh, well, I've been expecting your call. I knew Benny was coming down. Could you come down and verify this? Sure, I could come right down. I'm sorry to trouble you. No, no trouble at all. Uh, my wife and I are very fond of Benny. That was my call. I gotta go. Don't you want this? No, thanks. Uh, keep the change. Brother. Of all the kooks. tricks again? He's a great kidder. Aren't you, Benny? They won't believe me, Mr. Kenton. Uh, they won't, Benny? No. You, you said you could prove it to them. Uh, Mr. Kenton, he's a friend of mine. Uh, aren't you, Mr. Kenton? Mr. Kenton, go ahead and, and tell him. Go on, tell him how I did it last night. Go ahead. Well, uh, why don't you tell him, Benny? Okay. Well, it was this house on uh, Boyer Street. And uh, I hid there in an alley in the dark there. What time was it, Benny? Uh, 12. 12.35. That's what time it was. It's 12.35. That's, that's what time it was.
Now you've got to punish me. You've got to punish me. He's never been this bad before. He believes it. It was what I was afraid of. That's why I tricked him into coming down here tonight. I think you better call the police psychiatrist. Listen to me, Benny. Benny, are you listening? Now, you've got to believe me. You're not the one. Not even if you think you are. That woman wasn't killed at 1235. She was killed about 11 o'clock. She wasn't killed with a walking stick. Why the walking stick, Benny? Because. Because why? Because it was his. Who's? I don't know. I don't know. And I took it. And I, I hit her. And she hit her. I killed her. <laughs> Shut up. That woman was strangled to death with a silk stocking. <laughs>
Yeah, just a second. Lee, check with Lieutenant Klein. Take a squad car over to 312 Covington. Apartment 1. George Meekus, you know the fellow runs the restaurant? He thinks she's got the guy we've been looking for. Hello, George. Uh, who is the woman? Mrs. Kenton. Well, we've got Kenton here now. No, just Benny again. Is she all right? Yeah. Sure. I'll tell him. Thanks, George. Well, if that don't beat all. Mr. Kenton, I just got a call from your house. It's about your wife. Now, there's no need to be... Mr. Kenton. Now I bet you, you believe me. <laughs>